Good morning and welcome to Hot Seat. My guest is Karen Orsi, the director of the Oklahoma Mental Health and Aging Coalition. Good to have you on Hot Seat. Thank you. So this week, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley said, and she was announcing for president, said something a lot of people have taken issue with. She said politicians running for president over 75 should face competency tests. Interesting because the two people standing in her way are probably President, former President Trump, President Biden, coincidentally over 75, right? That's right. So what I've heard a lot of folks over 75 and, and they're saying this is a terrible thing to say. It works into ageism and hurts older folks. Your thoughts? That's exactly right. Um, I am very disappointed that someone on the national level which at, with access to the microphone would say such a thing because basically she has fallen right into the, the trap called ageism which again is disappointing because she's a person of color, she's a person, she's a woman, so certainly she's experienced things like sexism um, and she's <laughs> experienced probably some racism. So for her to be talking about ageism like that is just you know, really, really harmful. Um, the fact remains is that uh, an, an older brain is a normal part of aging. What happens with your brain as you age is that it, sometimes it slows down a little bit, it's slower processing, sometimes it's harder to find the words, but that does not point to any kind of cognitive disorder. That's just what happens when your brain gets older. Give me an idea of what ageism means. Uh, ageism basically is one of the, the big isms and it's not just um, having, uh, being too sensitive or having your feelings hurt or being a snowflake. Uh, ageism is very harmful and what it really is is a discrimination against people. A discrimination of people who are older, making them feel unwanted, uh, making them feel invisible, making them feel burdensome. Uh, and unfortunately it has a huge impact. Again, like it's not just funny black balloons when you're 40. Uh, or being over the hill kind of a situation. It's very harmful because it, it really interferes with uh, the services that are provided. All right, so a statement like this, a lot of people, and you're saying that something like that is harmful in terms of what older Americans have to deal with. Let's bring it back to Oklahoma for just a moment. You're head of this coalition on mental health and aging. What are some of our challenges here? Well, some of our challenges here is that we are an aging state in an aging country and we currently do not have the appropriate services for people who are aging. And when I say people who are aging, I'm not saying they or them, I'm saying us, because we're all aging. That's the one thing we have in common, we're all aging. Uh, so what we have here in Oklahoma is that we have an increased number of people, but we do not have an, uh, a system of care set up to address those. And like I'm a mental health cheerleader, but what I found out a long time ago is that you can't just do mental health and expect it to be okay because older adults have older bodies, and older bodies mean you are more prone to having chronic diseases and other ailments, uh, and it all, it is a mind-body connection. So we have to pay attention to those things, plus then you gotta throw in your environmental issues. If you have someone that is, is depressed, take, taking them to a therapist is the first step, obviously, but then if they go home to a place that has no heat, or if they don't have enough food, or they, don't have, uh, they can't buy medication, or can't take care of their physical needs, you're really not focusing on wellness. So um, in Oklahoma, we have um, what I would call a poverty situation with aging people. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about what's in the bank or what's in your pocketbook or what you get from Social Security. We're talking about a poverty of resources. We do not have resource, the adequate number of resources for people as they age here in Oklahoma. We also uh, lack, as do most other states, enough trained um, professionals to deal with it. We don't have enough geriatricians or gerontologists or we don't have enough um, clinically trained people. So what we need to do is to focus more on training and get our current workforce up to par so that we can uh, provide culturally appropriate services and age sensitive services to people. As it stands right now, we really just expect people as they age to fit in to the system we already have. And that's really uh, not a workable system because when we're talking about aging, we're talking about a huge number of people over uh, maybe five decades worth of experience. And in terms of when do you, when, well, who's an aging person, it's really hard to tell because those numbers are all over the place. You can be age 50 in some places, 65 somewhere else, but really we're talking about people around the ages of 50 or 60 to over 100. So that's, an, you know, that's, a, that's a whole diverse um, areas for people. So we need to have services that take that into account and we need to have specialized services because people have special needs as they age. Well, you're raising an issue that 
Nikki Haley started with. We want to continue this conversation. For folks that want to get a hold of you, they can do that right there at the screen. It's Karen O at NorthCare.com. And reframingaging.org is a place you can go for resources, information and resources about this. Karen, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. See this again at news9.com slash yearbook counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.